Well, this morning, <clears throat> we're going to just get right into the message this morning. We're continuing in our <clears throat> 30 series. We're living our lives <clears throat> like we had 30 days left to live, not because we're going to die at the end of the month. I pray and I believe that, that you have many more years ahead. But I just want just to, to, to think about just the urgency of our lives <clears throat> and the urgency of <clears throat> this thing called sin and this urgency of this thing called faith, which is the answer to humanity's sin problem. And Jesus, before he went to the cross, he shares with his disciples that he was not going to be with them very much longer because he was going to die. <clears throat> and so during this time period, we know as Passover week, through the crucifixion, through the resurrection, and through Jesus' ascension, he shared some principles with the disciples. And we've been trying to share some of those with the church. And I pray that you have grabbed a hold of them, things like living passionately. That every day we need to live the John 10, 10 life. Jesus said this, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life, and I've come to give you life, what? Abundantly. Anything great happens because of passion. You know why Michael Jordan was such a great basketball player, even though he was cut from his high school team? Because he had a passion and a love for basketball. And it showed when he was on the court. Your actors and actresses, you know why they're successful in the film industry? Because they have a passion. They spent time. They, they worked at it. You know what God's people needs in the life of the church? You know what we need more of? We need more passion. Not just a Sunday morning, go to the meeting place. But we need a passion for Jesus on Sunday and on Monday and on Tuesday. You get where I'm going. On Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. And then come back to Sunday. Then the second week we talked about we got to love completely. Man, there's going to be areas in our life where we're challenged. Can, can I just tell you, I was driving home yesterday from Ulaga High School. And Harper had just done her little cheerleading thing, had her cheerleading outfit on. They were hungry, so we're going to go to McDonald's. And I said, okay, Harper, you got, you got like a, a, a sports bra underneath. When the food comes, you can go ahead and take the top off and put it away. I, I, don't, want, I don't want to launder this thing. And they said, can we have some sauce? I said, no! There's no honey mustard. There's no ranch. There's nothing. You eat your nuggets plain. That's, that's how they did it back in the, in the Bible times. And they get done eating, and I turn around, and I'm still driving, and I turn around. And there's a pack of ranch and a pack of buffalo sauce, unopened at the time, in Hadley's hand. And she's sitting in the, the back right-hand side. And I said, Hadley, I need you to put those in the bag. Don't open them. Okay. 30 seconds later, ranch sauce comes careening up into my hair, on my seat, on my driver's side window. And I lost my mind. But I had to have a love completely moment after I got home and I had to sit down. I said, I'm sorry for losing my mind, but do you understand why I lost my mind? Yes. And then as a good preacher do, it does, I, I turned it into a Bible story and a Bible lesson. I said, Daddy loves you. But he can get upset sometimes when we don't follow uh, commands. Just like God. That's a good parenting moment right there. Amen. I said, just like God, when we're disobedient, he gets upset at this thing called sin. But he still loves us. So next time your kids do something stupid, like squeeze the ranch and it just catapults up. Be angry but sin not. And turn it into a God moment. This morning, I, I want to just, as the, as the pastor, Pastor Bill already mentioned, I'm kind of the watchman on the wall. I just want to encourage you. And I know we live in the age of cell phones and social media and culture and all that fun stuff. 
And I know some of us is like, man, I can play on my phone and I can re- read, the, read the weather and, and, and play on Facebook and play, play Tetris while the preacher's preaching. Listen to me. Don't be playing video games while the preacher's preaching. We wonder why our lives aren't working. It's because we're just goofing around with our spirituality. Do that at home when you're on the toilet, but don't do it in the church. Amen. Because if we find out there's more people f- focusing on video games and backcamming, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put an internet block in this sanctuary so that nobody be able to get on anything but the Bible. It's time that we get our, start bringing the Bible back into the house of God, and we wonder what our problem is in our life is because we love our flesh more than we love Jesus. I would, we got to open this sometime. <laughs> To get it in our hearts. So my, my request, I'm trying to be a loving pastor this morning. Coming back from vacation. If you're going to be on something on your phone, be the Bible app. Amen. We're not going to have the ushers like some church walk the aisles. There are some churches that do that, Pastor Bill. I know of one church, if you've got to use the bathroom, you gotta make, if you've got a, 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 a bladder problem, you've got to go check in before service and get a certain color card to be able to get out of the sanctuary. But you know, you might think that's crazy, but let me tell you why this is important. Because Satan will use anything and everything to hinder the Spirit of the Lord. Especially at invitation time. There's so many people that's got to use the bathroom, Sister Rita, when it's invitation time. But they sat through that three and a half hour movie. But we can't sit through an hour and 20 minute church service. Am I in the house this morning? Some of y'all wish right now that I was back on vacation. But do you ever feel powerless in your life? Amen. Do you ever feel powerless in your life? Maybe you got a habit this morning that, that you just feel powerless to break. Or maybe it's a problem in a relationship and you've tried everything to overcome it. Maybe it's a problem in your finances and you just feel powerless. You're like, I work, I work, I deposit the money, and then I deposit the money, and then it's, it's out. Maybe it's at work. There's things at your work that just drains your energy. Amen. Maybe it's in your walk with the Lord that you just feel powerless. Maybe, maybe your schedule this morning is overloaded and you just feel drained and you feel powerless to deal with your schedule. This morning, I want to talk to you about learning humbly. I want to share with you this morning that on our big idea, look at this. A powerful engine is of no value if you don't have the key. A powerful engine is no, of no value if you don't turn the key. You know, an engine can have a lot of power, but if you don't turn the key, it does absolutely nothing. I got these bikes up here. I appreciate Brother Stoney for finding them for us and getting them. I actually rode that little one yesterday. I was going to show you a video, but I didn't get it keyed up, but it's on my Facebook. It was fun. We were riding through the church parking lot hoping the police didn't get called. I was going to ride it in here this morning, but decided against it. But I can take this bike to a motocross track, or I can take it to a field somewhere. And Is this, what, 450? 450 cc's. And I can take this kickstand off, and I can just walk it around the motocross track. I can, I can walk it around the curves, and, and I can walk it, if I could, maybe with help from Stoney, push it up a hill, take it up a ramp. How stupid would that be? If I just walk around. What, what if people would walk, walk by yesterday or drove by yesterday and saw me and Stoney just pushing these around in the parking lot? They're like, man, what's up with that church? What's up with that cult? The cult of motocross. But what happens, and what would happen, when I access the power, some of y'all just woke up. Power and turning the key changes things. And I could get on this thing and take the kickstand off and rev it up and come flying down the aisle at you in my 
trajectory will have changed. Power changes everything. I really want to ride that right now. <laughs> but can I tell you, here's the problem. In our spiritual lives, so many of us have God's power at our disposal. But we fail to turn on the key. Because we're just content. You know what we're content to do? I just want to walk this thing back and forth. I just want to walk this thing. Oh, I got this great, awesome bike. I got this awesome, amazing bike. And it's going to take me places. And we're like the Flintstones. Because some of us are scared to get close to God because we're afraid that God's going to change some things in our life. We're afraid that God's going to actually take us someplace. And we're just content, just, just barely making life and complaining about it. Man, when I got on this thing yesterday and just flew through the grass and up the hills, there's a power. Guess what? We have access to God's power that will change your life. And some of us are just content with living powerless lives and complaining about it. Are you in the house this morning? I hope this changes you. But, but here's the deal. All we have to do is we've got to turn on the key. All we've got to do, this is fun, I'm going to do it again. Was it supposed to do that? Come on, what's it doing? Did I break it? Oh, there it is. Get on the power train with the Holy Spirit. You saw that, didn't you? <laughs> The power of God will literally change your life. Now listen, when you get with God, it doesn't... Let, listen, when I get on this bike, and if I take it to a motocross track, if I'm not careful when I go take a, a turn, if I lean in too much one way or the other, there's something called G-force. And guess what? G-force happens in our lives. Because there's storms of life that's going to hit us. And we lean too much into, listen to me, ourselves. When we lean too much into others, instead of leaning into God, what's going to happen? We're going to crash and fall down. Or sometimes that, that I think, listen to me, I think, Pastor Bill, I can handle it. So there's this ramp, and I'm going to go over the ramp, and I'm going to use my own strength, and I haven't done the research, and what happens? I go over the ramp, and I'm going to flip the bike, and I'm going to crash. But guess what? We're going to crash and burn. There's a, there's a person in the Bible that I want to talk about this morning for a few minutes. His name was Peter. He thought, this dude thought he had it all together. And he took his own strength and, and he lived with his own power, he thought, and, and he crashed and burned. We know the story. But I'm so thankful this morning that God gave him power to begin again. Just like God will give us power to begin again. It's okay to fall. The question is when you fall, just make sure you fall forward. Because when you fall forward, you're that much closer to your destination. The life of Peter, listen, teaches us this morning, and this is the from the title of the message, the life of Peter teaches us how to learn humbly, Brother Mike. Because Peter crashed and burned many times. This morning, I want to share just three things with you, and I'm going to try to do it as quick as I can this morning. Number one, I want to teach you from the life of Peter how we learn humbly is that Peter and us, we have to learn from our losses. Luke chapter 22, verse 62, 61 to 62 says this, The Lord turned, look at this, and looked straight at Peter. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. 
And Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him before the rooster crows today. You will disown me three times or deny me. And he went outside. Look at this. And Peter wept bitterly. Folks, I don't know about you, but that's a picture that Peter had of deep sadness, and deep sorrow, and deep regret. He had this moment. He said, man, I, I believe for, for the life of Peter, in, in that moment, it was a learning moment for Peter. And he, Peter said, I blew it. Peter said, I messed up. Man, I had, I had the Son of God walk in with me. I had the Son of God that invited me to come alongside of me, or to come alongside of him in this faith journey. And Peter said, man, I had it all, but I blew it. I was walking with the Messiah maybe this morning. You feel like the wheels have come off on your track. Maybe this morning, something in your marriage, you feel like you've blown it. You've derailed in your marriage. Maybe your business has been derailed. Maybe your work has been derailed. Maybe your walk with the Lord. But listen to me. The Bible says that Jesus looked right at Peter. And he looked right into his guilt. And he looked right into his shame. Listen to me this morning. So, much, so many of us are trying to be like Adam and Eve, and we're trying to make a covering for our shame and make a covering for our guilt because because you don't think that God can handle it. I got news for you. God can handle it. Jesus is looking right through us right now, and he says, listen, I know you've blown it. I know you messed up. I know that you've crashed and burned. I know that you've put the bike over. But listen, what you have to do is you got to pick it up and you got to get back on. And you got to begin again. I want to share a couple things with you this morning how we can learn from our losses. The first thing is this it's on your paper is that we got to take responsibility for our failures. You know what Peter did? The Bible says that Peter went outside. When he realized that, he went outside and he wept. Bitterly. In other words, he was taking responsibility for his failures. Proverbs 28, 13, write that scripture down. It says, a man who refuses to admit his mistakes can never be successful. But if he confesses and forsakes them, he gets another chance. Listen to me. When you and I, when we admit our mistakes, one of the things that I hope my kids will learn from us and learn from us as parents and just learn in general is that it's okay to say that you're sorry. We have a culture that just doesn't want to say they're sorry. We have, we have a culture that just wants to blame everybody for everything, and, and, and it's everybody else's fault. Can, can, can I tell you that when I crashed on this bike, I didn't crash, but speaking theoretically, it's not Stoney's fault that I crashed because he brought me the bike. Are you with me? It's, 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 it's not when I'm, when I'm driving down the road and I crash because I was going too fast. It's not the road. It's not Oklahoma Department of Transportation's fault because I was driving too fast. Are, are you with me this morning? Are, are you in the house this morning? It, 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 it's not when I'm on the motocross track. It's, it's because the dirt was a little too slippery. Or the mechanic tuned the bike to go too fast or too slow. Listen, we have to take responsibility for our failures. When we make a bad decision, it's not somebody else's fault. Yes, somebody could have invited us into that decision, but ultimately it's our responsibility to either enter into that sin or depart from that sin. Are you with me this morning? It's not the devil's fault when you stay home from church. We stay up too late, or, 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 or we just we want to watch that show in the morning, or, or we just, it's, it's not the devil's fault. Listen, when you don't get nothing out of the preaching, it's, it's not my fault. I'm going to say that again. It's too quiet in here. When you don't get nothing out of this preaching, it ain't my fault. Because I'm prayed up, and I'm studied up. You want a good preacher? Can I just tell you this morning? If you want a good message on Sunday mornings, how much do you pray for me during the week? Because if you're, if you're praying for the pastor, you're going to be invested when you walk in the door. Huh? How much do you pray? You want better music to lead you and make you feel so good? Put some hair on your arms and make you feel good? Do, do you pray? Say, Lord, speak to me. 
But some of our worship is so dependent on if our favorite song is sung or not. Well, I like them singing better than I like them singing or whatever. Or I like that guitar sound versus the... No, it's dependent. If you want to be entered into the throne room of God, have you prepared during the week? we got to take responsibility that our lack of spiritual development is not on the church, it's on us. I get so sick and tired of people saying, well, they just didn't feed me. How many of y'all would you raise your hand and, 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 and say, if you're going to go out to eat tonight, to, today after church, would you just raise your hand? Like two people. Some of y'all are lying. <laughs> but listen to me, how absurd. Let me just tell you how absurd. You're, you go to the restaurant and you sit down. And the waitress or, or, or server or waiter or whatever you call them nowadays, they put the food down. And you're like, man, that looks good. That rack of ribs or that hamburger or whatever. And you just close your hands. And then you start talking, I'm hungry. You know where I'm going? And I'm like, somebody's like, well, if you're hungry, eat. Well, well, I'm waiting on that server to come and cut it up for me and put my fork in it and feed me. They don't get paid for that. You gotta physically pick up that burger. Or that skyline chili. Or that Frisius. Or that Grater's ice cream. I'm telling you all the places that I ate. That La Rosa's pizza. Or those five malts from UDF. I spent like $50 on chocolate malts from Lord have mercy. The same is true in the church. The seed is sown. The message is given. And it's up to you to pick it up and say, and make a decision to say, hey, I'm going to either apply this to my life or I'm going to cast it aside. And most of the time when we don't apply it to our life and we cast it aside, we go out from this building and things happen in our life and we're like, well, I just wish the preacher would have preached on it. Well, you dummy, I just did. Some of y'all just got offended right now. Take the Word of God that's in the songs, that's in the testimonies, that's in the message, and apply it to your life and begin to learn from your losses. What, 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 what I, I, how do I learn? I take responsibility for my failures. But here's, here's the second thing, listen to me, is that you've got to let go of your guilt. Man, some of y'all are walking into some shame for because of things that happened 22 years ago. And you got to let it go. That thing has got you bound. That thing has got you tied up. And until you let it go, until you let it go, some of y'all are living in past sins and shames and regrets. And listen, let me, let, me, let me read this verse to you and I'll move on. Mark 16, 17 sa- 7 says this. This is the angel. The angel says, go and tell his disciples and Peter. This is right after Jesus rose from the tomb. The angel says, go tell the disciples. And, 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 and if you have this in your Bible, Mark 16, 7, you need to underline these two words, and Peter. This is after Peter denied Christ. This is after Peter did, walked away. This is after Peter on the third denial. He literally cussed that girl out because if you actually look at the original Greek manuscript, not in our English version, he literally dropped dropped the F-bomb probably and told this lady, no, I didn't. I wasn't with that man. And go tell the disciples. And... (laughs) Peter, I don't know about you, but 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 in, in other words, he the, the angel's like, don't forget Peter. Yeah. Pe- listen to me, Peter's still included. Yeah. 
And listen to me, you got to let go of your guilt and let go of the shame because you're still included in God's forever family if you've been repented and been born again. I don't know about you. Here's the good news. When we fail, when we sin, when we slide, when we backfire, when we do all this stuff, when we turn away from God, He says, listen to me, you might have left me, but Jesus said, I have never left you because I will never leave you, nor I will never forsake you. I'm still here. You just have to come back to me. That's the good news, friend, is that we got to learn from our losses when we take responsibility and when we let go of our guilt. Today, God says, I want to include you. Today, God said, I have a plan for you. God says, I haven't forgot you. God says, I haven't just, just left you hanging there. It's time to get up. Let me give you the second one. Not only do we learn from our losses, but number two, we surrender to God's strength. So this is a little baby bike. And this is the big boy bike. I ain't going to lie, I got on the little baby bike yesterday. <laughs> because this is a powerful machine. Yes. Right? And I ha- listen to me, I just can't get on something like this flippantly. Oh, do you know where I'm going with this? I have to respect... The vehicle. (laughs) If you've been in church, you're going to understand this one. I have to have reverence for the machine. Listen, we just can't get on in our walk with the Lord flippantly. We got to have respect and we got to have reverence and we got to have honor. We can't just say, oh God, I'm just going to, I'm I'm going to serve you. And and, and then when things are going great, I'm just going to walk away. And that's what many people do. Listen, God don't play games. Neither should we. And we got to surrender. I got to to have respect and honor and awe and reverence for this before I get on this thing. And in our walk with the Lord, if we want our life to work out, we got to have reverence and respect and surrender to God's strength. In, In your Bible, it's actually on the top of your talk notes today in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The Apostle Paul was struggling. The Bible says that Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Scholars debate what the, what the thorn in the flesh is. I was reading, I was reading uh, on Friday when I was doing some more study for this message that some scholars believe, and, and don't throw stones at me, ladies, that some, some scholars believe that the thorn in Paul's flesh was his wife. Now, I don't believe that. There are scholars that don't believe he was married. There are scholars that believe he was married. Now, I'm just saying, I don't believe that, okay? Some of y'all ladies just probably shut me down just now. He said. Some have speculated it was his eyesight. We don't know. But the Bible says that he had a thorn in the flesh. And he asked the Lord to take it away. And listen, each time he said, My grace and your grace and mercy. Some of y'all don't know that song. Brought me through. He said, My grace is all that you need. Listen, here's that word. My power works best in your weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses, Paul said, so the power of Christ can work through me. You, you might want to write this down. Listen, listen, in God's economy, when I'm the weakest, God is the strongest. <laughs> Isn't that good? It's my very weaknesses that I try to hide, but God says, you know what? Stop trying to hide those weaknesses because when you lean on me, when you trust in me, when, I, when you activate my power in your weakness, you are now strong. <clears throat> when I'm weak, that's when God comes through. Can I just be honest with you this morning? Every week I feel so insecure and I feel so fearful to preach. <clears throat> Because I, I think about the fact that I'm going to be preaching to at least 100 people. And I'm like, Lord, would you just give me something 
from your word, would, something that would be good for them, something that would change their life, something that would speak to them. You know what my prayer is each week? That, 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 that God would give me something to preach to you that would make a difference in your Monday. Because listen to me, if, if I fail, I've wasted over 100 hours this morning. Are you, are you with me this morning? But you know what? When I submit my fear and my worry and my weaknesses of insecurity, when I submit those things to God, that's when God proves Himself real and that's when God proves Himself strong. Man, man, I kept asking, I said, are we good on these bikes? Are we good on these bikes? And then lo and behold, the second time it st starts to not start, but we got it. See, there's those things that you worry about. But listen, talk about the life of Peter. He says, you can't do it, but I'll do it through you. Luke 9, 23. Then he said to them, if anyone, listen to me, would take up after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Listen to me. When Peter was trying to do it in his own strength, he crashed. When Peter was trying to do it in his own strength, he crashed. But when Peter learned to deny himself, Peter became a champion. He became a champion. How do we deny ourselves and take up the cross? You know what? We have to, the best way I can think about this and share this with you is when we think about the cross and coming to the cross of Christ. Listen to me. I got to come to the cross of Christ and I got to come to Christ and I got to bring him myself. I got to bring him my, my own plans. And I got to submit them at the cross. And I say, God, it's not my stuff. It's not my plans. It's not my, my ministry. It's not my church. It's not this. It's not my family. It's not my house. It's not my car. But God, I submit them to you. And please take them and use them for your glory and use them for your honor. Because God, I can't do it on my own. And I got to be careful because sometimes pride will rise up in me. And if you're not, if you want to be honest, pride will rise up in you because you think you can handle it. Sometimes there's things that I can ha think I can handle, but then I'm like, I can't handle it. <laughs> God, you, you handle it. God says, deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow. We've got to say, God, my plans are your plans. If you want to adjust them, you do it. So we learn from our losses. We surrender to God's strength. And let me give you this last one. We pursue God's path. You know, when Peter started to depend on God, you know what happened when Peter started to depend on God and trust God? God began to use him in a powerful way. Listen to me, that same voice that denied Christ, not once, but twice, but three times, was the same voice that preached on the day of Pentecost, the first sermon in the era of the New Testament church. The same cusser <laughs> became a praiser. And began to talk about the miraculous power of Jesus Christ. And over 3,000 people that day got saved. I'm so, can I just tell you, I'm so thankful this morning because if God can use Peter. Surely he can use this guy right now. Because I relate to Peter so much. I get so excited, but then sometimes my foot gets in my mouth. And I'm like, did I really say that? But if God can use Peter, he can use us. Aren't you so glad about that? Can I, can I tell you this morning that the Christian life is the most exciting and exhilarating, but also frightening and scary at the same time? Because when we turn it over to God, it's full throttle. You know how fun these things, when you go full throttle on these things? It's fun, but it's scary. Because just, listen to me, a little rock can send you sliding. And guess what? When we're full throttle for Jesus, sometimes just that little thing can take our mind off Jesus. That little distraction. That it's always the little thing. The Bible says it's always the little foxes. That spoil the vine. Well, I don't do this and I don't do that. But maybe it's just that little thing. You know, when I study Scripture, and I'm going to fly through these. i got 
Three more things this morning. They're on your talk notes. Psalms 119.32 says, I run in the path of your commands, for you have set my heart free. When I look at Scripture all throughout from the Old and New Testament, when I study different people's life, I, I find three things that happened and three things that usually happen when people are following the Lord full throttle. The first thing that happens, write it down, is we have the call of God. Man, God always calls people. Listen to me, I have a call of God on my life. I have ever since to be a pastor, ever since I was like a little kid when I was in my bedroom preaching hellfire and brimstone to my stuffed animals. I lined them all up. I said, you better turn or burn. Better get right or get left. And my dad is like, what are you yelling about? <laughs> Listen to me, I got a call on my life. You got a call on your life. You got a call upon your life to be great. Listen to me, ladies, you got a call on your life to be a great wife and to be a great uh, a mom. Husbands, you have a call on your life. Men, you have a call on your life if you're married to be a great husband and to be a, a great parent. When you work, you got a call on your life to be the best employee. Listen, Christians should be the best employees on their jobs. Can, can I tell you that? Christians should be the best employees on their jobs. We shouldn't try to be shortcutting everything. Can, can I just tell you, yesterday I went to this ball game to see Harper cheer, and I'm sitting there halfway through the ball game, and I'm thinking, no one ever asked me to admission fee to get in this thing. And I noticed that they had an admission thing in there, and I didn't even think about it. I just walked on past. I was trying to get her there and everything. So after the game, I, I, like the Lord is like dealing on, with me. And I'm like... And I asked somebody, I'm like, did you have to pay admission to this thing? They're like, yeah, but just don't worry about it. They make enough money. And the Lord's dealing with me all throughout like the second half of this game. And so after the game, I walk. And I, I had my $20 in my pocket ready to pay admission. I was prepared. But I just got caught up in the moment. So I'm leaving. And all these people are coming in for the next one. And I'm like, excuse me. And this little teenage kid there. I mean, I could have got away with it. This little teenage kid, I'm like, did I need to pay for this? He's like, yeah. I was like, my bad. How much is it? So I paid my five bucks and had these two dollars and Harper was in free. But listen, if I, I could have walked out of that place and saved my seven dollars for the popcorn, I could have invested that seven dollars for ORU popcorn. That's a good point, man. But if I did that, that popcorn would have tasted so bad. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Is that we shouldn't try to shortcut, change, ch uh, shortcut things to get an edge. Because we're called. We're called to greatness. But listen, after the call, number two, I hit a wall. So many people in Scripture, man. Think about Peter, man. He's like, yes, Jesus, I'll follow you wherever you want to go. Jesus, you don't have to wash my feet. I'll wash, I'll wash you, Jesus. And then all of a sudden, Peter hits a wall. Because when times get tough, God, I know you called me to be a great husband. God, I know you called me to be a, a great dad. But, but God, right now, I don't feel like loving anybody. God, God I know that, 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 that you called me to be a great pastor. But right now, I just don't have the energy to do anything right now. Anybody with me? God, you've called us to greatness, but we can't do it. You hit a wall. So we have the call, we have the wall, and let me give you number three. Then there's the fall. Stay with me for just a moment. We have the call, we have the wall, and then we have the fall. You said, Pastor, that's really encouraging because I, I thought the, the, the wall, listen to me, I thought the wall was the hard part. No, because after the wall comes the fall. Listen to me, there's only two places that we can fall. You might want to write this down. This morning, you can either fall flat on your face or you can fall to your knees. One of them doesn't work very well and the other one works very well. You can fall to your face. You see, first comes the call to greatness, then we hit the wall and then we realize we can't be great without His power and then we fall. Psalms 20, verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought, listen to me, they are brought to their knees and fall. Listen to this. But then we rise up and stand firm. Listen, if you stand proud, you're going to fall flat on your face. 
But when you get on your knees and trust God for his power, he will raise you up for greatness like you've never been up, raised up for greatness before because as Pastor Bill preached last week, he's got a great plan for your life. Friends, this morning, there's many of us in this room today that we got to get off our face. And we got to get to our knees. Listen to me, I, I, I am as convinced as I've never been convinced that if you want to see this place full, we got to get to our knees and start begging God and asking God. If you want your family members saved, you need to start begging God. Stop, 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 stop just thinking about yourself and start praying for your family members to get saved. Amen? This morning, I can't do many things over in my life again. There's a lot of things that I like to do over again. How about you? But the reality is we can't. But although I can't do them over again, I can do them differently. You know, I, I wish I could have the do-over yesterday with that moment with, with my kids in the car. I was, man, I was mad. My, my blood pressure. Beck was on her way to work, and, and I texted her a picture of this ranch dressing all over my truck. I, 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 I swear, like, my, my truck smells like ranch dressing if anybody wants to help me get that smell out of my truck man and I get home and I said I hear the Holy Spirit say it's just a truck I said but God it's my truck and God's like me, me and God have these conversations like this and, and, and God is like yeah dummy who do you think gave it to you And so I, 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 I got home and I get a bowl of cold water and I go out to my truck and I start wiping it out. I'm probably going to shampoo it out this week. What? Oh, you, oh I want to do your car? Oh, man, thank you. See, look at you putting that condemnation on me right now. <laughs> um, moving on. This morning, though, what do you want to do differently? That's what this 30 series is about. What do you want to do differently with your life, with your family, with your relationship? God, 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 what do you want to do differently? <laughs> what do you want to do differently? What do you want to change? Listen, you can't do it over again as you stand this morning, but you can do it differently. This morning, I want to just challenge you to harness Harness the power of God. Harness the power of God in your life. Listen, I'm telling you, maybe before he puts those up, maybe I'm going to, I'm going to, maybe, maybe, I'm going to wait for all y'all to leave. So there's no incriminating evidence on cell phones. But listen to me, it's time for us to harness as individuals and as a church to harness the power of God because it will change your life. I want to pray with you this morning. Heavenly Father, I pray that you just help us.